Today, I'm sitting here in front of two old custom scooters of the two SIP founders, Alex and Ralph. The Biden These Biden. scooters have a very eye-catching custom paint job by File Design. And Filey, as we call him, the founder of the company, was famous for custom paint jobs at the time. That was back in 2001. And since then, a lot has changed in the scooter world, especially when it comes to SIP's parts selection. So it's about time that we take one of these two scooters and update it a bit. As you can see, it became Ralph's scooter. And as the producers didn't trust me with such a responsible project on my own, they put someone at my side. He's a screwdriver legend and a young, hungry and wild person combined in one. It's Nico! Hello! Applause for Nico, please! And could you briefly introduce yourself? I'm Nick and I've been working at SIP for two years. Before that, I was self-employed for 10 years with my own store in Freiburg. So please excuse me if some dialect comes through now and then. Whether I'm a legend will probably be revealed in a project. I didn't understand a word. Too much dialect. Sorry. Let's start with the history of the scooter. It was painted like that 21 years ago, which is quite a bit of history already. But he still has a prehistory, because this scooter has gone through many stations in his life. That's why we picked out a few old pictures. The compilation here is very funny, because you can see the two scooters of Ralf and Alex, as we showed them to you earlier. The scooter with the speed blocks is the yellow one from Alex, which already had a very cool design back then. And behind that one is Ralph's silver scooter, which he called a Ducho Racer at the time, with brown and yellow colors. At that time, he even raced against the well-known sprinter of the Rollerzentrale, and he even said that he has won. But I don't know if that's true. When they later founded SIP, they painted the scooter completely yellow. You can see that here where it sits at a booth at the Extravaganza Fair. This was shortly after the founding of SIP in the mid-90s. The scooter was painted completely yellow and the mudguard also existed at that time, which is still on to this day. Finally, they repainted the scooter in 2001, which looked like this afterwards. And as you can see, not much has changed since then, both on the scooter and the hairstyle. Let's get back to the scooter. Hey, Jesko. How do I look? Uh, gorgeous, Nico. Very good. <laughs> we are now trying to get the scooter down through the warehouse. Just a moment. I'll hold the door open for you, Nico. Charlie, did we have other pallets for vehicles? Did we always take a board or something similar? I'd say let's go find a board. It's even heavier than the scooter. And as always, I have, I have the heavier side. I move it back a little, then we put the pallet in front of it, and then we can simply move it over. Try to go all the way down with it, please. And now just drive it up a bit so I can see if it's secure. I think the scooter is secure. We first fill the tires with air and see if the scooter still works. I hold the air pump at an angle and you fill it up, Nico. This is very little space here. Now it's getting exciting because we're now testing whether the engine will start and I'll bet an espresso that it won't work. Let's see if there is any fuel in it. Somebody has thoroughly drained the fuel. Do we have any fuel left? We can drain some from my scooter. We just need a gas can for that. I think that was a horrible idea. Because it has a very short kickstarter and will almost certainly not start. Wait a minute. I'll put something in here. Again. 
exactly. The fuel hose is completely kinked. Can you see that? I would say that nothing is coming through at all. <laughs> yeah. I think the moisture is mostly coming from the brake cleaner. Nico! Nico, you have to come and have a look. I don't see anything. Is it coming? Yes, it's coming. I think there's just no fuel getting through here. We can't do it like that. It's very dry, which is probably the sign that it didn't get any fuel. Probably because of the kinked hose. Since we already have the carburetor here, it makes sense to clean it right away. Do you think it's worth it at all with that? We won't get any fuel in that way. Or what do you think? I would use an external tank. Now we have a tank without fuel again. But we'll get it empty. We'll secure it with cable ties, then nothing can really go wrong. In your next life, you will become a cable tie artist, Diesco. I'm already known for my cable tie artworks. Where's the pump? Here. Here. Great. With the gas prices nowadays, you can't let anything go to waste. This must be on one level with the cable ties. Then it should actually work. Now it's perfect. Yes. yes. You did a great job. Awesome. Aren't we going to do a test ride? Or we take the scooter to the dyno and test how the engine runs now. Then we'll see how that goes with our update and what happens with a 90s setup compared to a modern setup. Now I enter Rolf, Racer, Silver, and then I write Setup 2001. And then I write Setup 2001. Hit it! So, Nico, that was super interesting. I think that was super interesting, Nico, because to say it again briefly, we have here a setup with a Molossi old cylinder with 60 mm stroke, a resonance exhaust, a large carburetor, and a relatively large RD reed belt. That was a pretty nice setup back then. The scooter now has almost 24 HP, 23.5 to be precise. That's not so bad. We have opened up the diagram and compared the old and modern setups. The red curve is the modern setup. And you could say that it has the same performance. But the thing happens here in the lower range. Because here, where you drive at 5000 RPM, the modern setup has 4 HP more. And it can therefore be driven much more harmoniously and with more pressure. Also, the modern setup was running with a simple SIP Road 3.0 box exhaust and a 24SI carburetor with no modified intake on the rotary slide. That means the large carburetor with reed valve is the blue curve and the small carburetor without reed valve is the red one. The box exhaust is also red and the blue line is the resonance exhaust. It's amazing that the modern setup achieves the same performance and actually has the better curve. It has to be said though that the setup is so modern that it is not yet available. Carburetor and exhaust are available of course, but we'll explain the 200cc in between in more detail another time. Still, it's quite impressive. You can also see that what was built in the 90s was actually not so bad. It works really well. So with over 20 horsepower and 24 newton meters, you can definitely ride it. Right, Nico? You can definitely drive that. You were actually well equipped back then. 
So for that time, it was a good engine. I think it's great that we tested it together and that the engine started thanks to Nico's efforts. Because now we can finally compare the whole thing with the modern setup at the end. What has changed and whether we have done a reasonable job. I think that's it for today. Or can you think of anything else we can do? It's Friday. We could go for a beer. That sounds like a very good plan. It's Friday, the sun is shining, and it's almost time to go home. So, that's it for today's episode. Activate the bell, click the heart, or the star, whatever. See you next time, we're going to get a beer now. Ciao. Did you know that SIP now has flannel shirts? I don't think so, Gesko. That's glaube ich nicht, Tim. I really have to show you this. So that no one can say that I was talking nonsense. But this is still a prototype.